actually started really, I mean, in video and cinema and, and film. Uh, when I was in college, I hadn't done any photography, really, uh, video or anything. But I was in an English 102 class in my second semester, and my, my professor said, uh, instead of a research paper, I want you guys to film and shoot a documentary series. And uh, so I did that, and I was hooked at that point. take a picture of a person and it can never be duplicated it doesn't matter they could you can never be duplicated so that appealed to me more so it was more of a challenge and it was more unique so that's really how I got into portrait photography um, or why I do portrait photography I mean the only real other disconnect between doing video and photography obviously is just maybe it's just some of the tools I mean Obviously, you're sh I'm shooting film or one shot, or I'm using strobes. You don't use strobes in in a in a video, but that's really it. I mean, there isn't as much as especially now that DSLRs are so popular, and we shoot primarily on DSLRs. I use Photoshop on almost every image I take, um, but I don't use it typically for anything other than hair, scratch, and dust removal. That's it, really. Um, but I mean, I, I do shoot primarily film, but I do also shoot digital. I mean, you have those clients. I have a, a Canon 5D Mark II, um, you know, that old workhorse. And I do a lot of fitness photography and fitness photography just makes a lot more sense and is a lot easier with a digital. So I do shoot a lot of digital. And, uh, but even on my digital photos, I, don't, I, try, I try to retouch very, very little in post. I try to keep myself extremely raw. I can be as picky as I want with who I shoot for. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to go shoot some senior portrait or something just to kind of make ends meet. So I can say, I can pick and choose my clients. I do get approached a lot by just various people and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not really, this isn't really my interest, but I can refer them to other photographers so I know that they, they do that kind of thing. So really to me, there isn't no difference. I get to pick my clients and I, usually the concepts I pitch or their ideas are right along with what I would do anyway. I can't really speak to my video because I don't do video by myself anymore. I work with a team and it's a big creative process. So I don't have a style with that. I have a team and I love the work we do. But for photography, I, I've thought about this a lot and I don't, I, yeah, I don't want a style. I don't want someone to see one of my images 
and see my work repeatedly and be like, without even seeing a watermark, would have been like, oh, I know who took that. Chin more to me. Turn the feet back. Bring them a little closer together. Okay. There we go. Alright, three, two, one. Chin more to me. Yep. Can you walk that around a little bit? When I look at all my work, like I'll love something when I first scan it in. I look, oh, that's awesome, that's awesome. Two weeks later, if I look at it, I'll usually hate it. And I think that's, I don't know, I feel like that kind of helps, you know? I mean, that's constantly looking to improve. I mean, if you think you're taking the best photo you've ever taken and it can't get any better than that, you know, if you can't go anywhere, then, you know, I think you can get complacent and your work will suffer. So I'm never happy or satisfied. I'm actually usually pretty disappointed <laughs> in my photography. The thing about photography is I've always had a, I've always had an extremely technical mind, but then I've always had this random kind of creative side. And the thing about photography is you have to have both. I think. I mean, digital is making it easier for people easier for people not to have to think as much about the technical side because they could move much things around. And but you have to be able to understand the technical to create creative if that makes sense you have to say okay i want this result so i have to mess with these things i understand that because i have this size of film or this big of a sensor or this it will affect my image in this way and you have to be able to understand all these things and put them together to create you know what you want it's like when i get a new camera i get really excited to shoot on it you know it's like i only want to shoot on that camera and then i totally master it i'm like I think I need to buy a new camera so I can master that one, you know, it's just the next thing, it's the next thing, it's the next thing, and it's, oh, I, I'm sick of having someone else develop my film, I need to develop my own film so I can figure out that process, and once I got that, it's a little boring, but now I'm kind of stuck with it, so, yeah, that's kind of what's always driven me. I like this, like that, chill, yeah, do this. Obviously, it's when you connect with a model, um, the photos are going to turn out better when you connect. Sometimes I do find it hard to connect. That's why I'm super picky with my models, you know. Let's go right about here. So, if you don't mind, land on the ground. Good. So, what we're going to do is kind of a, a perspective shot. We'll, we'll see how it works out. But basically, we're going to have Tyus land, lay on the ground. And in post, I'll flip the image so that it looks like he's sitting on the ledge, but really he's laying on his back. We'll see if it works. So it should. Get those crunches in. I'm trying to make my shirt lay flat so it looks. Well, what you can do too is kick your feet out a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, you would probably be sitting your feet all the way. 
Now don't go so high up with your head. There you go, now turn your head to me. There you go. Nice porta potty in the background. Cool. Alright? Yeah. Put your right foot forward and your left foot back. Now. There you go. Yep. You're just chilling. Like keep your left right foot pretty straight. Just like this. That's good. I don't have a goal or anywhere I really want to go. I just want to keep learning and producing. I'd really like to be able to really help kind of bring up the market in Boise and kind of bring quality, like because even for video, film, all that. It's not really the kind of town that has a lot of that creative stuff going on. You know, like the LA, it's all these videos and photo shoots. I don't want Boise to be like LA by any means, but it would be nice to create like a really creative, interesting movement here, but I don't know if I'm the person to do that. So let's keep it pretty close to the fence here. down for whatever really. <laughs> Alright, go for it. Let's just walk. Dance. Yeah, do whatever you want, man. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> Dark slide. Why don't you remind me? Don't hurt yourself. You don't have to like no, I got soccer scholarship. <laughs> what if you why can't you play this season? Step and you lean forward, your head is up there. Let's just practice it real quick. Can you show me? Yeah, right there. Don't move. Okay. Are you ready? Big attitude, yeah? Go for it. Great. Alright. That's one. They do make smaller ring flashes. <laughs> Should probably get one. Go for it, man. Strut, you'll be strutting and I'll be like, alright, look at me, and you're just like, just keep going. Yeah? I'm totally cliche quoting someone here, but I think um, it was Angela Adams who said that the, the most important component in your camera is the 10 inches behind it. And it's not the camera, it's not the lens, it's not the lights, it's really what you do when you see um, and how you interpret it.
photographer, digital photographer, and a video producer, and I have just been framed. <laughs>